it's four o'clock in the morning. I'm just about to make a um, set off on a little camera trip to Exmoor, about 250 mile drive. As you can see, the camera gear is all set up, ready to be packed up and go. Back, packed up and put into the car. Digital, there's a 5 DRS in there with a, there's another Mark II body, but I've got infrared one there. There's a spare Mark II body there. This is the large format stuff, um, all packed away, lenses and camera. GoPro, just bits and pieces for the GoPro to make the videos. In this one, we've got um, the film. Well, off we go. It's about 420 mile journey. It's about 10 to 5 this morning. I was a bit tired, couldn't be bothered to get up, but it's 10 to 5. We'll probably be there. We've stopped for, if we stop for a cup of coffee, 9, half past 9. I'm not going to rush down there. I know the weather's not going to be, I'm not going to get there for dawn, so, which is around about 8 o'clock, so there's no point in me sort of killing myself to get there, I just will poodle down and take my time. So, uh, I'll give you, I'll turn the camera back on once we actually get onto Exmoor itself. What about the rest of today? Today well, afternoon? listen to the world forecast. Well, across uh, southwest England and southeast England, where we are, cloudy in most areas. Uh, some outbreaks of rain around through the next few hours. Some of that on the heavy side, but it will eventually clear away through this evening. Ten to twelve degrees this afternoon, but uh, cooling off as the. Well, there you heard it. It's going to clear away this evening. Uh, well, it's it's one o'clock now, so it does clear away all well and good. I'm going to give it a couple of hours. Perhaps it. I'm not even looking for it to clear. I'm looking for it just to stop. I'm going to try and get a picture of the valley, the bridge, and the water without any sky in it. So I'm not particularly. You know, I want it to be wet because the wet brings the colours out in the trees. Okay, the rain stopped a bit. As you can hear, the water's running fairly quickly at Water's Meet, and I'm just making my way down there now. Um, if the rain holds off, we may get an image because I'm going to try to get an image that picks up the colour in the tree. There's still a little bit of colour. Obviously, not, it's, all, it's not autumn colour. But if I can get a little bit of a, an image without the sky in it, that's what I'm looking to do. But when we get there, we'll see, because I think the river's going to, with the amount of rain we've had, the river's going to be raging, but we'll see. But as you can hear, the water, absolutely banging it along. Uh, this is normally fairly steady flow along this water. If I give you a quick view of the river. You can see here, this is a sun torrent coming down through these valleys. It'd be nice to get a photo of it. It's a bit muddy, but I'll try that. Well, one thing I won't be doing is getting in the water. You can see behind me, that's running downstream. And that there is the actual the water's been waterfall. So, anyway, we'll, we'll see what we can do. But we need to be careful of the water. I don't usually do um, voiceovers for these videos, but in this case, where there was so much noise from the river, it was really the only way I could explain what I was actually doing or what was going on. This place is called Water's Meat because it's where the poor oak water and the East Lim River actually meet, and that's where the waterfall is. Um, where you can see the river rushing past me, it's actually rushing down towards the sea, a couple of miles downstream at Lynmouth where it discharges. Due to the rain, 
which we saw earlier, the river was running extremely fast. And I needed to be careful, not only for the equipment, but obviously for me. I did, you know, if you fall in that water, you're going to be a fair way down before you can drag yourself out. And if the camera falls in that water, that's good night, nurse. It, go on, it'll be ruined. As you can see from the video, I set up on a shallow rock ledge which was dipping out into the river but that did afford me some protection against the flow and allow me to set up for two reasons really obviously I didn't want to be in the rushing water but secondly to reduce camera movement because that water had you been any further out would have produced quite a lot of shaking in the actual legs of the tripod and it, it would have been a bit too dangerous to hot, try and hook the bag onto the tripod to give it a bit of stability because if, if it did go everything would have gone with it uh, as you'll see there was another issue in that water was constantly splashing onto the lens so I was constantly going round the front and cleaning the lens setting it up um, I used some tilt on the camera so I actually laid the plane of focus down along the river and running up into the foliage so it gave me a good definition of the actual river as it run past and the plane of focus moves out in a wedge shape so I was able to capture quite a lot of the foliage as well. Metering, which we'll see shortly, was fairly simple. You know, when you're looking at metering this can see your highlights are the white water and shadows are in the foliage itself so once you take an average of that it's a fairly simple metering process for that particular scene quite high contrast but simple um, one thing I was trying to do is to get the shutter speed between sort of 0.5 and 1 second the reason for this is, is once you go beyond and you'll notice this in digital cameras for people who use digital cameras once you go beyond one, one second, you start losing the structure of the water. You know, it, it goes all together and just becomes a sort of grey, misty effect, which some people like, but personally, I like to see some structure in the actual water itself so you can see the moon. I took two images, one on Velvia 50 and the other on Ilford FP4. Both images came out OK. Um, probably the black and white image a little bit better because I can get a higher shutter speed and thus more structure in the water. But I'll put them both on this video so you can make your own mind up at the end. Well, as you can see, and here, water's still rushing along. It's about three o'clock now, so it's just gone free. I'm making my way back. I took a couple of images on the large format. One in Velvia, which I'm not too sure how it come out. And one in FP4, black and white film. That should come out okay. Um, you know, there's a fair tonal range there. And you've obviously got the water rushing past. So. It's enough for today, though. Uh, I took two images all day really so I'll just hope the weather's a bit better tomorrow